Okay, the next point of discussion, question number 74 and question number 74 has been derived from the topic principle of communication. Again, what I have consistently been saying that there are some topics which are specifically meant only for JE mains, not for JE advance and you can easily see and analyze this year's question. Questions from those topics, the topics of only JE mains have been very particularly raised. Now here let's say a telephonic communication service is working at a carrier frequency of 10 gigahertz. So here if we see the solution, the carrier frequency if I write F sub C that is 10 gigahertz, that's 10 into 10 raised to the power 9 hertz. All right, only 10 percent of it is utilized for transmission. So the remaining 90 percent is a wastage. So what is being utilized for transmission? That is something like this. F C dash let me write only the 10 percent is used. So quite obviously that will be 10 raised to the power 9 hertz. All right. How many telephonic channels can be transmitted simultaneously if each channel requires a bandwidth of 5 kilohertz? Bandwidth, a range of frequency. In other words, the width of 5 kilohertz is consumed by one channel. So quite obviously, straightforward, the number of channels that would be used here, if I denote it by n, that is going to be 10 raised to the power 9 divided by 5 kilohertz so that's 5 into 10 raised to the power 3 and that comes out to be a straightforward solution 2 into 10 raised to the power 5. So this many number of channels can be transmitted simultaneously under this given condition. So the correct option for question number 74 is going to be option number 2. Right then let's move to question number 75. Okay, question number 75 from wave optics and the topic is polarization. Again, to repeat, polarization is the topic which is there only in JE mains. So one thing can be used as an analysis, those five or six chapters which are there specifically only in JE mains needs to be focused for any future aspirant. This is the message. Now let's see what it is. Unpolarized light of intensity I passes through an ideal polarizer A. So there is an ideal polarizer and unpolarized light passes. And we know the light which is transmitted will have half the intensity I by 2. That's a fact. Another identical polarizer B is placed behind A. The intensity of light beyond B is found to be I by 2. Now this is something like this. Let me try to show with the help of figure. Now, let us say this is the first polarizer and this is the next polarizer. Now we will just have to see the plane of polarization and here let us say is how the light would be passing in terms of direction. So this is the direction. Now here the first thing what we know is that whenever the light passing has an intensity i, this is the unpolarized light. Passing through one polarizer, the intensity is I by 2, that is a fact. This is polarizer A, this is polarizer B. But the question says, even after B, the intensity of light is I by 2. So that means, that is a straightforward conclusion that the polarizing axis for these two polarizers, they are parallel. Because that can happen only when the axis is parallel. So it is something like this. So here just to indicate and here just to indicate and that final axis or the final intensity what it comes here becomes I by 2. So from the first data we could conclude that the polarizing axis for the two polarizers A and B are parallel. All right now let us see the second part of the question what does it say. Now another identical polarizer C. Now the next identical polarizer that I have is C and that is placed between A and B and the intensity between B. So this is A in mid another polarizer is kept and this is B. So the final intensity is said that is I by 8 and we need to calculate the angle between polarizer A and C. So A and B are at the extreme, 
C is at the mid. So what is going to happen? Let's try to see here. Again, let's try to make the polarizer and this time we have already said now we have three polarizer. So this is polarizer A, this is polarizer C and this is polarizer B. And it has already been given that the polarizer A and polarizer B have the same plane of polarization. And let me just try to draw polarizer C which comes here. So let us say it is inclined, just a figure to indicate. This is A, this is B, this is C. And eventually what is happening is whenever light passes and comes out, so starting from here it comes there and what it says is that the intensity here is I by 8. Now let us try to see. Let me say the angle between the polarizing axis of A and C be theta. So what would happen? If this intensity is I, it is a fact the unpolarized light when it passes through a polaroid, the intensity becomes I by 2, that is a fact because this one is the unpolarized light. Now the light that passes through A is a plain polarized light and when a plain polarized light passes through a polaroid, we need to apply the law of malice. So let us say the angle between this polarizing axis and this bit theta. So here that would be I by 2 cos square theta, that is a straightforward one. And eventually say, just try to understand, the light which comes through C is plain polarized but the direction would be this parallel to this one. Now this will pass through B and the angle between plane of polarization of this light and this would be theta. So again using the law of malice between this and this, that would be I by 2 cos square theta is the incident for here multiplied by cos square theta and this value is coming out to be I by 8. So all you need to do is that equate this with this and that is a straightforward simple calculation as simple as a breeze and that value will be cos theta equals to 1 by root 2 and theta of course will be pi by 4 or 45 degree whichsoever language you want to use. So here the angle between polarizer A and C would be 45 degree. Option number 2 is the correct answer for question number 75. Now let us move to question number 76.